We don't trust the police to protect us. We're the left as a community can protect ourselves. We train people from across the left wing spectrum to provide skills and the confidence to protect themselves, be that sabotaging hunts or on anti-fascist demonstrations. Racism is on the rise, the far right is on the rise. People need to know how to defend themselves. I've been going to anti-fascist demonstrations for a number of years now. I kind of saw a wider popular racism take hold of society with Islamophobia, opposition to refugees entering the UK, and I thought I need to get involved to stop the spreading of these sorts of ideas. The government are providing the space in which fascist organisation can grow. If you cut public services, if you come out constantly with Islamophobic rhetoric and rhetoric against refugees, that's going to feed into fascist movements. We saw in Dover in 2016 massive levels of violence from the far right. Groups like the Infidels groups, the Northwest Infidels, the Northeast Infidels, the Southeast Alliance, National Action. These are really, really hard right fascist, white supremacist organizations. Over in America with Charlottesville, we saw massive levels of violence from the far right there. We've had Tommy Robinson coming onto the scene with the rebel media, bringing out big numbers in Manchester early in the year um, against the Salafist bombing. Um, We've had the Football Lads Alliance come out. I think there's probably a lot of people on that march who aren't far right, but they will provide a, a breeding ground and a recruitment ground for much more far right forces in the UK. There's the real potential over the next six months to a year for the far right to really, really start to mobilize again. These are shins, so I don't batter my shins up. Obviously, gloves, protect your fists. Groin guard It's obviously what's that for. We train what works, really. Some people have got a background in Muay Thai, some people are boxing or grappling sports, and we just try and give people the basics, nothing too complicated. Have you ever had to use some of the skills in confrontations before? Um, I'm Probably rather not answer that question. We're always vigilant against letting the far right know who we are and where we live and where we train. The far right has got a history of attacking and beating up left wing activists. As an anti fascist, I'm committed to mass community mobilisation against fascism. I think historically the effective examples of opposition to fascism from Cable Street to Lewisham, more recently to Tower Hamlets have been engaging masses of the community. It hasn't been about having this small, hardened group of lads that punch Nazis. On the other hand, people need to have to be able to defend themselves, they can't just turn the other cheek. So what we're doing today is just working on basic strikes. We try and instill the club with our own commitment to equality, to feminism, to opposition to transphobia, opposition to homophobia, opposition to racism. So no matter who you are or wherever you come from, you feel comfortable and safe in that space. It has made me a lot more confident. For me personally, it was also being like a woman in a very patriarchal and misogynist society, it's important for me to be able to feel, you know, comfortable and confident walking around the streets at night. Fascists pose a particular threat to society and at the core of their very ideology is genocide. And I think with people like that, you need to use any means necessary to stop them. One clinch like this, equally, or even having grabbing hold of someone's jumper with a T-shirt. 
I was one of the people that started it. I do come from quite left-wing family. Being vocal and active against any sort of prejudice was just always there. Bring the knee up on its own. What we teach here is practical use. You might be a, a victim of an attack, victim of an aggression, or you want to step in in defense of somebody being attacked or somebody being abused. You know, just real life shit, basically. You need to display full aggression. Once you start the fight, you carry on until there is no threat to you anymore. Just basically go for it. We've gone from being a kind of smaller group of mates to trying to market ourselves to the wider community. We had Peter Irving, he's got the credentials that we might attract proper fighters along to our session. Today we're just looking at um, practical real life applications for, for sports techniques. A few things from Muay Thai, a few things from catch wrestling, a few things from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, different techniques that can be applied in real situations. Push him, pull him, we start to see how he moves his feet. Leg. And nice soft sports martial arts provide a, a framework where you can take the body and take your mind to the absolute limit without breaking. And then you increase that limit. Each time you train, you increase your maximum capacity until people become nearly invincible. Anti-fascism, to me, I can't understand why it would be anything other than your default state. If you're not an anti-fascist, well then, then surely you're a fascist. My interests may have begun as a child. I have a mixed race family and living in an all white area. And I would come to my school desk and find uh, pictures of uh, Stugas with swastikas, dive bombing houses with burning black faces inside and stuff like that. That, that was quite upsetting as a kid, I suppose. I didn't really fully grasp that. But now I look back, I think maybe that's where it stems from. From this position there, I'm going to use my knee. Bring it forward. Okay. Continue to turn. I'm going to move up. Trim it here. Okay. A lot of the following of Brent First and, and ADL, a lot of the support, a lot of them are not hardcore Hitler loving ideologues. What they are are just ordinary people, probably got brought up in a household where their moms and dads were a little bit racist. They didn't have uh, big immigrant communities when they were growing up, and now they do, and they look out the window and they look at the road that they grew up on, and it doesn't look the same as it did when they were little, and it makes them a bit nervous. It's really claustrophobic, it's a terrible position to be, so or, or the guy would turn over, his instinct would tell him to turn his face away. A choke cold, and the guy would be forced to submit or pass out. You know, where a group like National Action, you're really talking about some uh, sort of a hard fringe of just really weird guys. They're fucking nerds. Fascists love it when liberals hand them the platform to speak and saying, oh, well, we have to respect the right to free speech. It's been shown time and again that that doesn't work. You can't ask for freedom of speech and simultaneously deny it to others. So I'm going to do this and put it in front of his face where he can grab it and go behind his head. Can you see there? So if he's trying to pull my arm off here, you try to pull my arm down. This one? Yeah. Where he sticks his thumbs in my eyes. You see what I'm doing here? I put my head behind my hands here. That's it. See, find my eyes? No. 